It is good to be back. And I've been here, and this is the first time that I've actually left you without anybody planned to be in the pulpit. And I thank God for Kevin and and uh, and all you Wayne who filled in and and uh, even Max Lucado. <laughs> um, you know, I was actually physically sick all night uh, that night, uh, the 17th, the first day, and and at 4:09, that's the 17th. That morning is when I typed, I started typing this. And I was, as I was typing, I was hoping that my multiple trips to, to the bathroom, both sitting and kneeling, would be done. You know, I'm not sick too often, and, and really it's been about 10 years since I actually threw up. But it kind of made me feel good that I was a bit sick while taking sick leave. <laughs> you know, I... I, I felt good that I felt bad, if that makes any sense. Please let's turn to Psalm 91. You know, I'm glad that, that things turned out well here for you guys. And, and as you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just a broken piece of clay. You know, I, I have some pliable stuff, you know, stuff that, that seems to be working with God, but I need, there's a lot of stuff in me that needs adjusting. It needs work, and sometimes it, I think it needs to be thrown on the floor and, and stomped on, just to, just to break it enough down to where it can be worked into the other clay, that, that, that I, I'm, I'm worthy to be shaped by God. You know, it, it feels good to feel bad in this way too. But broken pieces of clay also need care. And I thank you for your prayers, your concern, and and as I left to care, take care for my dad, I can't tell you how much of a blessing you guys are. For your understanding, your sacrifices, and, and the giving of yourselves during this time. It's, it, it's overwhelming, and it's uplifting. And I can't thank you enough. And by God, shall supply all your needs according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Do you ever feel you've ever been stomped on? Wrung out and left out, hung out to dry? Well, if you felt that way, I want to take, take heart. There's an eternal truth we can place our hope as a good purpose for these temporary trials and frustrations. You know, as I was visiting with my dad, and my mom, I asked them, what, what can I preach on, on on the last Sunday of this year? And they said, Psalms 91. And if you'll read with me, starting with verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. We'll, we'll come back to Psalms 91, but uh, let's, let's turn, to, turn with me to James 1, 13. You know, many times the Bible compares us with sheep, okay? Then. I don't always agree with that, or I should say, think that, oh man, I'm a sheep, how wonderful that is. But this time he compares us with birds. Three times, there's, there's three different words for birds in this passage, yakish, ibra, and kanaf. A bird trap, bird feathers, and a bird wing. Bird trap, a fowler's snare. It starts here, doesn't it? I, I helped uh, rig a, uh, a trap a long time ago, and it was a pretty, pretty simple trap. It was just chicken wire in a box with uh, plywood with two one and a half inch slats on the top of it. And we set it up, and within a day, that thing was full of starlings. You know, the most elusive of God's creatures, I mean, they, they, they can fly away. 
could be caught in a simple trap. You know, this trap doesn't do any attacking or, 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 or perform any offensive or defensive actions. It just sits there. You know, many times it's not the fault of the trap, but the fault of the trap that we get trapped. You know, who put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden? It wasn't like a lion that stalked or attacked and killed. That, that, that tree just sat there. You know, kind of like a fowler snare. But with the warning, God says that you can eat of any tree of this garden, but the day you eat of this tree, you're going to die. It, 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 was, it, was, it was a warning. You know, just one among thousands. God warned them about only this one. He wasn't trapping them. They were free to eat anything. But they ate of the only forbidden fruit. God could have placed an angel. Yeah. Or, or several angels guarding that, that tree. He, he, he guarded the tree of life after they ate that with angels. He could, have, he could have guarded it with angels. He could have built a wall around it. You know, kind of like Trump's wall. Of, he could have built a wall. He could have just obliterated that tree and taken out that decision altogether. The only provision God had in keeping Adam and Eve from eating of the forbidden fruit was faith. Faith in what God says. You know, some people think God was tempting. You know, maybe it was more of a means to expose the true untrusting heart of man. God, I, I, I know what you said, but you know what? I think I know better. I, I, I think I know how, how I can be happy or how I can be fulfilled or how, or how I can feel like I have a purpose. And, and God, I, I know you, you said, you know, that all these other trees are wonderful and everything, but that one, yeah. James 1, 13, it says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Let's turn to Psalms 55 too. Yakish, a fowler's snare. You know, man enters it of his own free will and then is trapped by his desires. You know, I've been trapped. And I, I realize that my being trapped is a result of my own flawed desires and, and the trust in my own ways, my own ideas of way life should go instead of placing my trust in God. I trust my own understanding. I'm leaning on my own understanding rather than trusting in God with all of my heart. You know, hindsight's 2020. You know, the, the beautiful thing that God did is, is that he allowed us to be able to use our 2020 hindsight and restart. To renew a, a trust in God again with all of our hearts. Yakish, a fowler snare. Ibra, feathers. You know, even though we are trapped, that desire for freedom can be gratified. We can, we can, we can flit around in this temporary existence, you know, and, and, and just eat of the one tree, the forbidden fruit of our own desires, of the rest of our lives uh, for a temporary time. But... God, we, we got an inner desire. God's placed eternity in our hearts. We want freedom. And God has said, I can give you back your freedom. You can again renew your trust in me and understand that my way is, is, is the best way and that my way fulfills your desires, fulfills your needs, fulfills your purpose in life. We were place that we were designed for a garden to thrive in. And we can take the opportunity granted on Christ's behalf by repentance, redemption, and renewal 
to be joined back again to what God designed us for. We were made to fly and be free. And even though we initially chose to jump in the trap of our own self, God provided a way of an escape. You know, one tree was the entrance to the trap. And one tree was and is provided to escape the trap. You know, the, the devil meant the trap for evil. But God repurposed it to, to bring us fully to him. You know, God's design, he designed a daring rescue and flight from the trap. You know, like the Israelites were slaved in the land of Egypt until God's appointed exodus. Like, 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 a, like a butterfly or, or a caterpillar is stuck in a cocoon until it's ready to emerge and fly out. Or, or like, a, like a chicken in an egg. Until it's time is to hatch out of there. God constrains us. There must be a design in the trap. The fowler's snare. For something more beautiful than having ever, never entered into it. Ibra. Feathers. Yakisha, a fowler's snare. Flight, flee, escape. Escape like a dove. You know, before the foundation of the world, Jesus hatched an escape plan for us through himself. You know, I don't know about you, but, but if I could fly and escape, I would think I would be pretty safe. You know, if There's, a, there's another passage that says in, in Psalms 52, I mean 55, verse 2. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I'm in distraught. At the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has ever overwhelmed me. And I said... Oh, that he had wings of a dove. I could fly away and be at rest. I, I could flee. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. Silah. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. Please, let's turn back to uh, Psalm 91, 5. Kanaf. Wings. We have a wing to flee to. Uh, there's a shelter. Uh, what does it look like? I, I know I've used this illustration before, but uh, there was a, there was a, it was about a fire that devastated a farm. And, and the farmer was looking at the damage, you know, the barns destroyed and the outbuildings. And, and he noticed, you know, across the creek that the cows and the horses had escaped and they were safe. He wasn't that for the pigs that were trapped in their pig pen. But, he, but he's, he's walking around the farm. He notices something. And he's almost disgusted at it. There, right in the middle of the pathway, in the open, he could have flown free, was his chicken. He was all scorched. And, and he could have flown free. And, you know, and he looked at that chicken. And pretty soon in disgust, he, he gives it a boot and says, Stupid chicken. And out from underneath the chicken were several unscathed, unburnt, uncharred, healthy chicks. Kanaf. Wings. And we were trapped of ourselves between our sin and the law. Jesus fulfilled the law and became sin for us to shelter us from the power of the law and the sting of sin. You know, I, I would love to end the story there, you know, and, and, and those, they lived happily ever after. You know, once we escape the track of our own selfishness, there are weapons that are not as passive as the old trap. Our flight from the trap becomes a trap shoot. Anybody know what a trap shoot is? Is, is that where they throw the, the pigeons out? You know? And, and you feel like a pigeon, you know? And, and 
you get out of the trap and there you go and boom, everything's aiming at you. The Bible says the devil goes around like a roaring lion. There's a spiritual warfare. There's, there's fiery darts that are aimed at us from the wicked. Just being freed from the trap is wonderful. Yeah, fly, be free. <laughs> Whoa, watch out. That God has promised us that, that, that we will have trouble, that there will be persecution, that, that yeah, that we're going to have a battle to fight. And we must put on the full armor of God. We will work out our salvation by the grace given unto us. You know, it almost gives us the impression at, 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 at the onslaught that it would have been safer in the trap. Because the, the devil doesn't aim at the people already trapped. He aims at the ones that are escaping. Satan doesn't target the ones in the trap. We, why fly out to an all-out shootout and risk even the temporary forbidden existence as an exposed moving target? It is a death wish culturally, socially, and even physically. You know, it's a death wish for the old forbidden temporary existence. But God doesn't leave us without a promised destiny. You know, it, it, it may feel like a threatening place, you know, where everything, you know, the battalions are aiming at you. But look who's protecting us. He did, God loved us so much, he sent his son. I mean, do you think he's going to fail us? No. He's going to be by us. He's going to guard us. He's going to take away. He's going to quench those fiery darts of the devil. The roaring lion rawr, has no teeth, has no claws. The booming guns, they have no bullets. The fiery darts, they're quenched by the shield of faith. So wing your flight through that door. The door of Christ and be lifted by the power and the wings of the Holy Spirit without fear and terror. I'm going to finish off with uh, Psalm 91. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by death by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe them with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up, they will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and, dis and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 7, verse 9. You know, some say Christianity is for the birds. I'll take that identity. I like that better than sheep. I understand that my own, of my own free desire, I chose to trust in my own understanding rather than believe in God's truth. I've fallen short from the grace of God and, and God's glory and have been trapped between my sin and God's law. Trapped like a stupid dodo, ignoring God's wise warnings. It's a bad place to be. But God has provided an escape to reverse my stupid decisions. And, and, I, and when I acknowledge that stupid decision that I made and say, Oh man, I shouldn't have done that. God says, good, good. Hey, I got something for you. There's a way of an escape from your own trap. I provided it for you. Jesus, my son, he died for you. He lived that perfect life. He, he trusted me. He, he, he gave everything 
and leaned on to, to, to my understanding and his. He was God. And you, by believing in him, by entrusting your life to him, you can get out of this trap. Repentance. I understand I messed up. It's an, it's an about face. It's turning from your way to God's way again. In 2 Corinthians 7 verse 9, Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you, what earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. And then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Re re repentance leads to salvation in which God, Jesus, provided as himself as a door back to our freedom. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. He washed away our sins and covers us with his righteousness like, like, a, like a hen covers her chicks. It's kind of like the perfect escape plan where we're transported out of the trap in a coffin. You know, under the wings of a, of, a, of a charred hen, so to speak. We're buried with Christ. This is the plan God set up for us to escape the trap, the fowler snare. Are, are you seeing the process? You know, maybe you've read about or, or watched an escape of prison where, where somebody faked death. And the only way out of that prison was for them to, to take on death, to be put into a coffin, wheeled out of that place. And then later on, his buddies were able to dig him up out of the grave and he was free. We repent and we die to ourselves to go through the only door of faith in Jesus Christ. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus gets us out of the trap by redeeming us and providing a way out. But there, we're not just buried with Christ. You know, we just don't say, oh man, I made it out of this prison. I made it out of this trap. Now I can rest in this coffin and, and woohoo, happily ever after. You know, that, that's, not, that's not the way that God designed it. He says, I, I'm going to dig you out. You were, those that are buried with him are also what? Raised with him in new life. And a lot of times we as Christians, we just say, hey, I'm, I'm content. I'm out of the trap. I'm just going to lay here. I, I, I'm redeemed. And we forget to live. We forget to take, hey man, I got some wings. I got some feathers. You know, I got some things that I can do in this new life. I can entrust it. I can trust God and lean on his understanding and not my own. If we're buried with Christ, we'll also be raised with him. He doesn't just leave us out in the cemetery, out of the confines of the trap. He gives us new wings of our own. You know, I, I was reading 1 Corinthians 15 about uh, 4 o'clock on another morning, kind of out loud to my dad as he was uh, having a hard time sleeping. And uh, really, my dad wants this passage out of his funeral. 58 verses, crazy, huh? But it, it talks about heaven and the ultimate victory over death and sin. But, the, but there was a cool passage right in the middle of Paul's flight from the trap of sin. In, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15.10. And this, this, this kind of hit me. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Okay, he didn't just stay in the coffin. He worked harder than all of them. But, it, but it, then he gives the credit. Okay, yet not I. But the grace of God that was in me. Don't. Don't limit God's grace to the coffin. Get that grace that's with you and fly. Work harder. And, in, and understand that your work is not of yourselves. It's the grace of God that's with you. But, but understand that, that this work, man, it's, it's, it's getting you in the air. 
And it's the fulfilling work. It's, 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 it's enjoying the rest of the garden that God prepared for you. The, the other trees. Not that own selfish forbidden fruit, but the other trees. We're not left protected in the cemetery just to be freed from the trap of sin. God's grace hatches us to new life in the power of the Holy Spirit to fly, battle, and work out our salvation by the grace of God with us. 1 Corinthians 15, going down to verse 55. It says, where, O oh death, is your sting? Wait, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yakush, Ibra, Kanaf. A bird trap, bird feathers, and a bird wing. Repentance, redemption, and regeneration. It's a wonderful plan. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for what you've done. Lord, you've given us a second chance. Uh, even when we chose, all of us have gone our own way. Each one of us has chosen our own way. We, we ignored your counsel, your word, your truth. We've not trusted you. Our, our faith was lacking. We doubted. And then we understood that our way was a trap. Lord, help us to grasp that and to turn from our way and join you to release ourselves from the trap through your son, Jesus Christ, who made the way, the door, and the truth out of our own choices. Lord, I just pray that as, as we, we make that move from repentance uh, through uh, redemption, as Jesus Christ washes away our sins, Lord, that we move from there just not being just a, an empty or staying in the coffin, but to live and to, and to do what, what you've said, to, to trust to our, our lives to you and, and, and to, to work, to labor, because it's not in vain. It's wonderful. Lord, I ask that for everyone here, and I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.